Hello everyone, back to you today's second video. So we've already done the 5D forecast. You can find the video set here on the homepage. Just scroll down the page a little bit and uh, you'll find it just above the slow desk cam. There's also the Britain version. You can get that from the buttons at the top of the page. It's going to be quite a cold five days coming up. All focus really is on the risk of heavy rain, gale force winds and heavy snow tonight across parts of the country. By the end of the 5D forecast period, it will be turning milder. And so today's second video update will pick up the storyline beyond sort of the five-day forecast period, and we'll look at whether it's week to ten days. We'll also include the Beijing Climate Centre for the next 40 days in this update as well. We're going to start off by having a look at the Arctic Oscillation, Northern Atlantic Oscillation mode. So this is the AO observed and forecast chart. The black line here tells us where we've been with the Arctic Oscillation. The red line's at the end where the GFS ensembles are forecasting the Arctic Oscillation to go. Remember, this is just an index that's reflecting the state of the atmosphere. It's not driving anything. It just tells you uh, what the atmosphere is doing. Now, we can go back into the autumn with this. If we go back into October, we can see that then the uh, Arctic Oscillation was generally in a uh, neutral to positive condition, and that continued through the first half of November as well. But around the middle of November, we saw a change with the Arctic Oscillation, and we went negative. And uh, to be honest, we've been in a generally negative phase of the Arctic Oscillation pretty much since the middle of November, actually. We did get a spike up in the Arctic Oscillation there, went quite strongly positive, in uh, the second half of December, that was that very mild spell we had just running up towards Christmas, I'm sure you remember that. And just in the past few days, actually, we've gone quite uh, positive with the AO again. But those two uh, periods um, accepted, uh, it has generally been quite a negative period of the Arctic Oscillation. And the uh, GFS ensembles are forecasting the Arctic Oscillation to go negative again and to stay negative probably through to the end of uh, January, maybe even into the start of February. So the interesting thing about this winter is that we've had a very cold stratospheric temperatures, of course, over the North Pole. I won't go into those again for today's video, but have had a very cold stratosphere over North Pole during particularly the second half of December and uh, this January. And what's interesting with that is that that hasn't really coincided with a particularly positive AO. In fact, we have had quite a negative AO. So despite the cold stratosphere, uh, the polar vortex has been in a weakened state this uh, winter. And I suppose that's one of the things that's allowed for some very cold weather to get down into uh, Canada and America. Turned really cold there just after Christmas, of course, and into uh, early January. And we have had some colder conditions at times even in the UK and uh, western parts of Europe as well. But from an AO perspective, it's actually been fairly um, fairly negative, really, uh, through this winter so far. And the Jeff Summers are forecasting the AO to stay negative. Remember, when the AO is negative, it tells you that you've got more anticyclonic influences up over the pole. You've got high pressure up there, which is the route pushing cold air out of the pole down into the mid latitudes. Now, one problem, and the reason that, uh, despite that Arctic oscillation um, being negative, the reason we probably haven't had a particularly cold winter yet is that the North Atlantic oscillation has been in a positive state throughout this winter. So we've had the two indexes kind of uh, in conflict with one another. So again, this is the NAO observed and forecast chart. Black line again shows where we've been with the NAO, the red lines at the end, where GFS Sommels are forecasting the NAO to go. Now, if we go back into uh, November, we did have a run of negativity of the um, North Atlantic Oscillation through uh, much of November. But into the start of December, the NAO went uh, positive, and it stayed in positive territory then throughout the winter. It's very positive now. That's where we are right now, that black line. Uh, the NAO has gone very positive. And despite the fact that GFS ensembles are forecasting a drop in the NAO from where it is right now, nevertheless, the GFS ensembles still forecasting the NAO to stay in positive territory through the rest of January, possibly even into the start of February. So this tells us when the NAO is in a positive state like this, it tells us that we're strengthening low pressure around Iceland, and the Azores, and that strengthens the westerlies through the Atlantic, so it strengthens the Atlantic flow, if you like. If we'd have the NAO negative, along with the AO, if both indexes have been negative, this would probably have been quite a cold winter 
actually. It's just the fact that despite the fact they've quite a strong blocking signal over the pole, the Atlantic very often hasn't been in a state that allows that uh, blocking to push the cold air down into Europe, as I suppose that's probably the reason the cold air has gone down into North America. Uh, more often than not. But quite an interesting wing to this. A lot of um, conflicting signals, a lot of fighting going on within the atmosphere. And uh, should we get something like a sudden stratospheric warming, which would strengthen the blocking signal further, it's, I think it's quite possible that um, we would force the NAO into a negative uh, state. And therefore, we would probably turn things gen genuinely very cold, and wintry, or at least would have a go at turning things generally very cold and wintry. So um, it's still to be determined what's going to happen for this winter, but the way the two indexes, uh, and they're both reflecting the atmosphere, so the way the atmosphere, if you like, is in conflict, uh, such as it is this winter, uh, things could still go either way, I think, for February. It's not totally impossible that we could get some really quite cold conditions into next month. Looking at the GFS temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks, there's no sign of anything particularly cold coming up, certainly this side of the end of January. Uh, so this is the um, upper air temperature and precipitation ensemble for Bristol. We're looking at Bristol uh, today with the GFS ensembles. The red line here is a 30-year upper air temperature average. Uh, we're going to be going cold of an average once we get tonight's storm out of the way so we're going to be cold into the weekend then early next week we're going quite mild for two or three days uh by the look of it we'll bring a big mild sector up before we see the temperatures lowering but only going back towards the seasonal average of the final days of january dates on the bottom of the chart of course so probably very mild for two or three days early next week after a cold end to this week and weekend. And then from the middle of next week on was probably going cooler. But that's sort of taking temperatures back towards the long term seasonal average. No sign of a plunge into very cold uh, conditions there. In terms of precipitation, so uh, well, once you get tonight's wet weather out of the way, quite a bit of dry weather for the south and southeast uh, to the weekend. But next week, it looks like the rainfall spikes are coming back. So it looks like weather will be remaining quite unsettled through to the end of uh, January. Surface temperatures are looking like this. Again, we're looking at uh, Bristol. So we're going quite cold, actually, over the next two or three days. And that lasting into weekend. Sunday sees a lift up in the temperature, going up to around 10 degrees. That's 10 just there, freezing, 0 degrees just there. So uh, quite mild for uh, two or three days in the early part of next week. And then cooling down as we go through into the middle and uh, last stage of next week. And then that takes us into the end of the month. But same cooling down, only going back close to average, uh, really. So sort of 6, 7, 8 degrees, something like that. Not going down into a very cold uh, sort of temperature. There are a few very cold outliers showing up here for the very end of January and the start of February, but those are outliers. They aren't well supported. And overall, after a very mild start to next week, just for a couple of days, it looks like temperatures probably won't be deviating all that far from average. Temperature anomalies show this up quite nicely. So this is the temperature anomaly from the 17th, 25th of January. For the north, it's a little bit cooler than average. For the south, it's a little bit milder than average. Overall, no great deviation. Precipitation anomaly is generally coming out a little bit wetter than average. It will be turning more unsettled through the course of next week. This is the GFS for Saturday then. We're under this cold ridge. So cold weather continues into the start of the weekend. But Sunday sees a warm push of air from off the Atlantic. That probably brings a band of rain or snow. No, eventually that uh, warmer air will break through and it probably finishes up on Sunday, very mild day. Early next week, it looks generally quite mild with winds in from the west or the southwest. So perhaps a little bit of a touch of spring in the air over weekend and into the start of next week. But then on Wednesday, we have quite a deep area of low pressure, bringing some wet and windy weather. And then it turns cooler, even colder behind that low pressure as the wind uh, starts to come back from the northern Atlantic once again. And then we're running off into uh, quite an unsettled spell as we go through to Thursday the 25th, and then on to Friday the 26th, and then up to day 10, which is Saturday the 27th. The uh, wind remains from the west, so it remains unsettled. We've got high pressure to the south, low pressure to the north. That's a classic positive 
NAO type situation. You've got your high pressure down here around Spain and the Azores. You've got uh, low pressure up here around Iceland and Greenland. Between the two, the temperature gradient is strengthening the westerly flow. And so that would be the reason that the NAO is part of. Remember, it's always the weather that drives the index. It's not the other way around. It's not the index driving weather. The weather drives the index because the weather is set up like that with the low pressure strong around Iceland, the high pressure strong around the Azores. The contrast between the two strengthens the westerly flow. Uh, that's the reason that the NEO would be positive in that situation. So up to day 10, it looks like we keep things generally westerly with the uh, GFS. This is how the uh, ECMWF is looking uh, with all of this. So again, we've got this front system pushing in overnight Saturday to Sunday. That could bring some rain or snow to parts of the country overnight Saturday to Sunday. But uh, by the end of Sunday, we're introducing this milder west south westerly flow. And then through the course of next week, we just keep things very unsettled. This is, for example, it's a week away, Wednesday, 27th of January, when we've uh, got a deep area of low pressure out to the west of Scotland, and we bring wet and windy weather in from off the Atlantic. Beyond that, to keep it unsettled, this takes up to day 10, which is Saturday, 27th of January. And again, the pressure set up. Is one that has high pressure to the south, low pressure to the north, strengthening westerlies across the Atlantic. And so, therefore, it's unsettled, it's changeable. There's bands of rain moving across the country. The only saving grace is that temperatures overall are quite uh, mild. So, it looks as though we may be shifting more towards a westerly end to January, perhaps, uh, and maybe a more prolonged spell of quite mild and unsettled weather. Let's see what the Bayesian Climate Centre has to say, finally. So, um, these are 500 millibar heights broken down into 10-day periods. The first 10-day period taking us from the 11th through to the 20th of January. Um, so, the period that we're currently in, actually, we finally got this trough of low pressure over the UK and Western Europe. We've got ridging up to the north. So, this is a bit reflective of where we are right now actually which is quite cold but bear in mind late on in this period it will <coughs> excuse me it will start to turn a little bit uh, milder the next 10 day period is more influential uh, really this is the 21st to the 30th of january so the coming 10 day period but we're interested and it does look quite cool actually we've got below average heights across the west of europe above average heights extending through the atlantic it looks like we should be on the cold side of the jet stream there as well so that looks quite cool and changeable actually for the final 10 days of january i'm not sure how that really ties in with the charts that we've just been looking at. Then we go through to the next 10 days, which is the 31st of January to the 9th of February. This looks more more like what we've just been looking at, actually, with high pressure strengthening around the Azores and Spain and Portugal, low pressure in the Atlantic, and bringing the jet stream through like that. So that's a milder and more westerly uh, episode. And then we go through to the 10th to the 19th of February, and it looks like we probably start to, start to turn things quite cool again. Uh, with ridging through the central Atlantic, trough over here and through central parts of Europe, which will probably start to turn the winds into the north and bring some colder air in, uh, bring some colder air back for the middle part of uh, February. Not sure how those uh, early charts, though, really tie in with what we're looking at in the GFS of the e yeah, which does look generally quite westerly and maybe fairly mild, uh, sort of the final 10 days of January. So I think it's shorter range uh, charts that we probably stick with for the time being. And uh, once we get the quite cold weather that we've got at the moment out of the way over weekend, it looks like next week will strengthen the westerly flow and it'll be quite a mild and uh, fairly unsettled week perhaps at times as well. There will be colder sectors coming through though. So particularly for the north, you can expect some wintry showers at times. But uh, overall, maybe quite a westerly end to January. And then where things go into February, I think that really is very much in the realm of uh, speculation. Right, don't forget to check out 5D Forecast. If you haven't yet done so, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.